<sighs> it's my last one. Hey guys, first up today we've got Tyler Bargahub from ZMZ Reloaded posing the ultimate question. Is a zombie outbreak even possible? And next we have Casey Bassett from ZSAT asking what would you do if the government evacuated your city? And finally, we've got our very own Charles Fultz teaching us how to make a zombie shield out of a satellite dish without using power tools. The Zombie Go Boom report starts now. Welcome to the Zombie Go Boom Report, the show that takes you behind the scenes of Zombie Go Boom and showcases some of your favorite videos. I'm your host, Francis Wilson. First up, let's hear from our very good friend, Tyler Bargerhuff from ZMZ Reloaded. Thank you, Francis. So is a zombie apocalypse a possibility? That right there seems to be a question that a lot of zombie fans ask. But no one has properly answered it yet, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Being that I make zombies for all the bad videos, I want to make sure that this is actually a possibility because then what's the point of even making videos? So I'm searching out to find the answers. Not just for me, but for you too. So for there to be a zombie apocalypse, a virus has to succeed in three categories. Infectivity, lethality, and corruption time. It doesn't just have to be a virus though. It can be a primal or a parasite too. So are there any ways to turn us into flesh-eating monsters? Currently, no. But there's bath salts! Shut the f*** up! That's a drug. But there are some that have similar traits that can be mutated to achieve this. Like Toxoplasmosa gondii. It's a parasite that infects rats but only breeds inside its cat's intestines. It knows it needs to get inside the cat's intestines to breed, so it goes into the rat's brain and forcefully makes it go to a cat and kill itself to be digested into the cat's system. And the rat doesn't even know it. That's terrifying. But it doesn't really affect humans at all. So Taxoplasmosa gondii, you're out. Another one is mad cow disease. This infects a cow's brain and spinal cords and causes it to go into a violent rage or just stumble like it's drunk. But when humans contract this, it's called Kruitschfeld jacob disease. I don't know how to pronounce half this shit. It doesn't really make you violent, but it shuts down your motor skills and pretty much just makes you retarded. But it also takes the mutation of this to have the brain block the chemical serotonin and it will make humans turn into killing machines, theoretically. Then it just has to be transmitted through blood and saliva. Then bam, you got a zombie virus. Again, Theoretically. So is a zombie apocalypse possible? Yes. Is it likely to happen though? No. Want to know more information on if the zombie apocalypse is possible? Well, you can go to my channel ZMZ Reloaded and watch an uncut version where I go into more detail. So thank you guys for having me on the show again. So uh, anyways, back to you, Francis. Next up, we've got our ZSAC question of the week. Now the last question I have is 252. And this is another situational question. You live in a city and here it's being evacuated. What action should you take? Should you A, evacuate immediately with all survival supplies that you need, B, stay in the city and fortify yourself in your house or apartment, C, evacuate immediately, leave everything behind because every second counts, or D, loot nearby food and gun stores and fortify yourself in your house or apartment. Take time to pause the video if you need to answer the question. Okay, the answer to that question is A. You want to leave immediately and take all your survival supplies with you. The reason is, if you don't take anything with you, you're going to need it later. And you're going to die without having food or ammunition or weapons. And also you want to leave the city because chances are the government is going to completely destroy the city with napalm to destroy the high concentration of zombies that have broken out in the city. The zombie survival aptitude test it's a complete, full test, and that is exactly what you need in order to evaluate your chances of surviving a zombie outbreak. The 10 to 20 point quizzes that you take online aren't helping anybody, because they give you a false sense of accomplishment, which isn't going to help you in a real zombie outbreak. Now that's all the questions I have for you today with the Zombie Survival Aptitude Test. Let's get back to our team, Zombie Go Boom. 
last and definitely not least, we have Charles Fultz teaching us how to make a zombie survival shield out of a satellite dish, because honestly, who's gonna watch satellite TV during the zombie apocalypse anyway? Today we're gonna make a shield or a buckler out of a satellite dish. Now, where can you find a satellite dish? If you don't know, you can pretty much find them anywhere. Next, you're going to need a bracing bit. Now these are kind of hard to find, so you may want to call around town to different hardware stores to see if they have them. Uh, and once you have this, you're going to need an assortment of drill bits for anything that might need a hole drilled in it. And then what you do is you open this chuck and these teeth open, you slide your drill bit in, you close the teeth down, just like a regular drill, and you put the drill bit where you want to drill a hole, apply pressure here, and spin. And that's how you drill a hole with a bracing bit. Next, you're going to need some kind of rope, and you can make rope out of just about anything around your house. You can strip the wires from your walls, you can strip up carpet and weave it together as ropes, or you can cut it into strips and use them as straps, or belts, or whatever. Um, then you're going to need an assortment of tools, uh, maybe some pliers, and a belt. The first thing you need to do is take this down. The easiest way to do it is to start with the pole here. This has a uh, zip tie there, but it's really weathered, so I just pulled it off. Alright, these brackets are going to be pretty easy to remove. The problem is if I unwind them too much, too fast, this could come crashing down on me. So I'm going to take my time and I'm going to start at the bottom. Okay, so I've loosened one bracket, now I have to loosen the other. The problem is, as soon as I do that, this entire thing is going to come crashing down on me. So if you do this, make sure by this step, you get a friend. Charles? Okay, I actually don't know what we were worried about because this is actually really light. Uh, just so you guys know, of course, this is the main thing that we are after. This is going to be our shield, but there is a lot in this satellite dish that we're going to be using. For example, all of this hardware in the back, we're not going to be using any of our own hardware. We're not going to be using any of our existing resources. Uh, we are going to be using mostly just the hardware found in the back of this satellite dish. So let's take it inside and start taking it apart. Now once you have your satellite inside, you're going to want to take these bolts out. So you're going to grab your 7 16 or whatever size your bolt, uh, the bolts you need to remove are. And make sure you're going the right way and just take them out as such. Now once you have that bolt out, you can pull this pipe out and then all you need to do is take these four bolts out, those two here and those two here. Once you have that bracket off, you're left with your main uh, shield structure, which was your dish. And uh, we actually thought it was a lot smaller, so we're, we're going to be able to make a pretty good sized shield with this. Next what you're going to want to do is mark two spots here and here for your back, the back side of your arm. And basically how I did this was I put my arm here and uh, just basically guessed where my arm was going to be on the inside of the shield and mark the, the top and the bottom. Now what you're going to do is take a nail and a hammer or some kind of pounding device and um, put two dents where you marked your holes. Once you have your holes marked and dented, take your drill bit and insert it into the brace. Tighten the teeth down. You want to make sure they're really tight. And then you can begin drilling. Now 
And once you have your two holes drilled, take a length of rope. This one is about a foot and a half to two feet. And you're going to fold it in two spots like this and put each fold into the hole from the outside going in so that you have two loops coming through the holes. And once you have that, take your belt and stick it through the loops. And pull it through until you get the, uh, the buckle section. You don't have to use this kind of belt, you can use other styles of belt. Uh, but you want to put your buckle about right there. Hold the belt as you turn it over. Pull the, the slack just a little bit, maybe from one side to the other. And then you're going to tie uh, the two ends together like this. Of course, I'm sure everyone knows how to tie. And then you have your strap. And once you have your belt connected there, take another length of rope. This one's about two and a half to three feet. Fold it in half. You know, insert one end into uh, the front set of holes here, and then back through on the other side. So you, create, you have a loop on one side and two loose pieces on the other side. And then you take the two other pieces, put them through there, and then you take your hand, and you kind of give yourself, you know, estimate how much slack you want to give yourself. And then sort of tie these off. And then you cut another piece of rope, about two to three feet, fold it in half, and then you're going to come around to the other side and insert it in this way, and then back out here. And hold it here as you would uh, if you were wearing it, and then pull the slack out, tighten it up it back around and then hold it and then tie it. Now this shield is supposed to be uh, defending you against zombies and not necessarily bladed weapons so if you were fighting or if you planned on fighting against someone with bladed weapons you might want to you know reconstruct it and not use rope or you can put something else on the outside of this, like some couch leather or some carpet, something to that nature. So once you've got that, pull the slack out, you have your handle, and you have your strap. And once you put it on, put your arm through here, grab these two ropes like that, take your belt, Hook it up and tighten it. Okay. Wrap it around here. And now you have a makeshift zombie shield. Well, it's been another fantastic episode of the Zombie Go Boom Report. I'm your host, Francis Wilson. Until next time, stay alive.